Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, which is Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boylo, and in this module, our focus is on costs and procurement. This introduces two additional knowledge areas in the PMBOK as we consider cost management and procurement management. Cost management is concerned with the cost of all resources needed to deliver a project while procurement management provides guidance for working with suppliers to acquire products and services needed to produce the product. So let's get to it. Here's our agenda for this module. We'll be covering budget planning, cost estimating techniques, budget management, procurement management, PMI standards for cost and procurement, project cost management, looking at PMBOK, cost management takeaways. We will visit the knowledge area in PMBOK for project procurement management, and we'll finish up with next steps. So project cost management begins with preparing a budget estimate. And an order of magnitude estimate, sometimes referred to as a ballpark estimate, is typically provided in a project charter or initial proposal. More refined budget estimates can be made as more detailed information becomes available related to probable project scope. According to Watt in the assigned reading for this module, there are four tools and techniques that can aid in this work. The first is determination of resource cost rates. Determining resource cost rates means, means figuring out what the rates for labor and materials required to deliver the project are expected to be. Next is vendor bid analysis. For large or competitive projects, there may be a need to work with one or more external contractors to get your project done using an RFQ or RFP process. The RFP specifies the criteria to be used in evaluating the different bids and deciding on which one to accept, which may or may not always be the lowest bid. Reserve analysis is a technique that involves setting aside some money for cost overruns due to risk mitigation or scope changes. So, in other words, reserve analysis means putting some cash away in case of overruns. And finally, cost of quality. Projects need to have quality management in place to ensure proper testing in order to address quality issues earlier in the product development life cycle. We address managing project quality in the next module. However, in this context, cost of quality is simply a way of tracking the cost of these activities to ensure that stakeholder expectations are met. Estimates in the early stages of project planning are typically based on information from previous projects that can be adjusted or scaled to match the size and complexity of the current project. And there are several methods that can be used to estimate costs. The first is the analogous method. This is an estimate that is based on other similar project estimates in that are comparable in scope. So if a comparable project costs a certain amount, then it's reasonable to assume that the current project will cost about the same. A parametric estimate can be used if the project consists of activities that are common to many other projects. In this instance, average cost per unit may be available. Factors such as size, location, and timing are all parameters that can be used to as multipliers to estimate the cost of the activities. Bottom-up estimating is probably the most accurate as well as the most time-consuming estimating method used to identify the cost of each item in each activity of the schedule, including labor and materials. So this requires viewing the project schedule as a hierarchy in which the general descriptions of tasks are at the top, whereas the lower levels become more detailed. Next, the cost of each item at the lowest level is determined. And then finally, all of the costs are summed to determine the cost of higher levels, thereby producing a bottom-up project cost estimate. And then the, the final uh, technique is uses activity-based estimates. Here, cost estimates are aligned with project-based activity. An activity can aggregate costs from multiple vendors in addition to internal costs for labor and materials. Detailed estimates from all sources are reorganized 
So the cost associated with a particular activity can be grouped by adding the activity code to the detailed estimate. Now I realize this is a lot of information to take in. Uh, keep in mind that each of these methods are discussed in detail in the reading assignment, and they are also supported by many project manager software packages. Unfortunately, projects seldom go according to plan. That's why it's necessary for the project manager to be able to identify when costs vary from the budget and be able to manage those variations in order to cover unexpected costs. There are three techniques that can assist with budget management. The first is managing cash flow. Budgeted funds to support the project must be available at the time of need. If the total amount spent on a project is equal to or less than the amount budgeted, the project can still be in trouble if the funding for the project is not available when it's needed. The next is contingency reserves. Rather than overestimating each cost to try to cover all possible risks, money is set aside in the budget for dealing with unplanned but statistically predictable cost increases. Funds allocated for this purpose are called contingency reserves. And then finally, we have management reserves. Here, money can be made available at the project manager's discretion to deal with possible changes to the scope of the project, and these funds are referred to as management reserves. The process of obtaining goods and services from providers who are outside of the organization is called procurement. The procurement management plan details how the procurement processes will be managed. It includes the following types of information. So types of contracts used, as well as metrics that will be used to measure contractors' performance. Planned delivery dates for the work or products that are being contracted. The organization's procurement standards and policies. The number of vendors or contractors involved and how they will be managed. How purchasing may impact constraints and assumptions of the project plan. Coordination of purchasing lead times with the development of the project schedule and the identification of pre-qualified suppliers, if these are known to you. So here again, I'm going through this information fairly quickly uh, with the expectation that you will be sure to complete both reading assignments for this module for additional information and examples related to cost and procurement management. We now turn our attention to the PMI standards for project cost management and project procurement management. A quick look at the PMBOK project management group and knowledge areas diagram shows that there are four processes identified in the project cost management knowledge area. You will also see that these are aligned with the planning process group and the monitoring and controlling process groups. And these of course are with underneath the project management process groups. The project procurement management knowledge area includes three processes that are aligned with the planning process group, the executing process group, and the monitoring and controlling process group within the project management process groups. So now let's take a look at the project cost management and project procurement management within the PMBOK knowledge areas in greater detail. According to the PMBOK, project cost management includes the processes involved in planning, estimating, budgeting, financing, funding, managing, and controlling costs so that the project can be completed within the approved budget. There are four processes associated with the PMI standard for project cost management. The first is planning cost management. This is, a process, is the process of defining how the project costs will be estimated, budgeted, managed, monitored, and controlled. Next is estimate costs, which is the process of developing an approximation of the monetary resources needed to complete the project work. Determined budget describes the process used for aggregating the estimated cost of individual activities or work packages in order to establish an authorized cost baseline for the project. And finally, control costs is the process of monitoring the status of the project for the purpose of updating costs and managing changes to the project cost baseline or budget. 
There are three important takeaways for project cost management. The first is the cost of resources. Project cost management is primarily concerned with the cost of the resources that are needed to complete the project activities. Another aspect of cost management is recognizing that different stakeholders measure project costs in different ways and at different times. Projects with a high degree of uncertainty or where the scope is not fully defined may not benefit from detailed cost calculations due to frequent changes. Instead, agile projects rely on lightweight estimation methods that can be used to generate a fast, high-level forecast of project labor costs, which can be easily adjusted as changes arise. As a result, the use of detailed estimates is reserved for short-term planning horizons in a just-in-time fashion. Moving now to project procurement management, the PMBOK includes the processes that are needed to acquire products, services, or results needed from outside of the project team. This includes management and control processes needed to develop and control contracts, purchase orders, memoranda of agreements, or MOAs, or internal service level agreements, referred to as SLAs. There are three processes associated with the PMI standard for project procurement management. The first is plan procurement management, which is the process of documenting project procurement decisions, specifying the approach, and identifying potential suppliers. Conduct procurements is the process of soliciting and obtaining supplier responses, selecting a supplier, and ultimately awarding a contract. And control procurements is the process of managing procurement relationships, monitoring contract performance, making changes and corrections as appropriate, and closing out contracts. So in practice, procurement processes can be highly complex and often involves interaction with processes in the other knowledge areas that we've talked about in this class. These include cost, scope, schedule, and communications management, all touch on the procurement management processes. In agile environments, suppliers or consultants may be used to extend the team. This collaborative working relationship can result in a shared risk procurement model, whereby both the buyer and seller share in the risk and the rewards associated with the project. We conclude this presentation with next steps. Be sure to work through all parts of the course materials from Module 10, including all content, activities, and assignments. The only assignment for this module is the next sprint. And looking ahead, be sure to complete all associated readings in the course schedule as you prepare for Module 11. This brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boileau wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.